Right, let's have a look at uh, reflection and mirrors. So uh, here I've got a light ray, a uh, laser, a uh, laser, uh, coming in to hit a mirror, okay? And when it hits the mirror, we can hopefully see that as I angle and rotate the mirror, the ray is being reflected away from it in the same angle that it's coming in. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I just try to hold this in place while I make a little couple of markings here, here's the mirror, here's the ray coming in, here's the ray going out. Um, bear in mind, I'm drawing this freehand or just with a, with a whiteboard marker, so it's not super smooth. But if I was to draw an angle 90 degrees to the mirror, so in this case, what I mean is if I was to make an angle 90 degrees to the mirror here, this is called a normal. So normal is 90 degrees to a mirror. I'll mark it with an N. And what we'll notice is the angle coming in and the angle coming out, they look very equal. And if we actually measure them, we'll actually find they're the same. So the angle of incidence, if this is the incident ray, then the incident angle is the one made with the normal. And the angle of reflection are both the same. So we have two laws of reflection to, to consider ourselves with. We need to say that the incident ray, the normal, and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. So what that means is, is that like, for example, there in the, in the diagram four, or the example, the ray didn't jump off uh, the flat surface. It's just all on the same surface. And then secondly, that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, making sure that that's always relative to the normal. There are two types of mirrors you need to be familiar with. Um, you need to be familiar with a concave mirror, and a convex, which is the reverse. Um, firstly, let's just clear up. I, I prefer to use the terms converging and diverging, which you'll see now. Now, it's hard to see this with just one ray of light coming in. It seems to be following the same rules. If, when it comes to an angle, it looks like it's coming out at the same angle if we treated this at, as flat at the exact point it touched. But let's change it to uh, three rays, just see what's happening. So when I've got three rays of light, you can see here that they are all converging or meeting at the same point okay now this is when it's a perfectly curved mirror you can see when I move it off they go a bit all over the place this is uh, because it's not a perfect circle but just taking this point here where it's hitting uh, all the rays hitting a parallel coming together we can see that this is forming uh, all the light rays are meeting at one particular point this point here and this point is called the focal point so the focal point for this mirror is where all the light focuses together okay uh, so this is a converging because the light rays are coming together and it is a also known as a concave mirror. So concave and converging. Conversely, if I just reverse this here, you can see here the light rays are hitting the back of the mirror now or well if I, I flipped it around so it's a it's a it's a diverging mirror and the light means the light ray comes in but it's heading away in another direction and same down here. Um, a diverging, or another name for this, is a convex mirror. Um, but if we take a look and follow the rays on the other side, what we'll find is, I'm just going to do a few dots here just to show it, if I continue the rays, that they do meet on the other side, or they meet behind the mirror. And that means the focal length of a convex mirror is always behind it. Um, when we're doing this mathematically, we'll always make sure to use f as a negative value, uh, to signify that the focal length is behind the mirror.